Turn your radio Shorts Radio Shorts Radio This music brings healing Brings joy and life to the deepest Oh, gotta keep on Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us. This is the day that you make. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who make all this possible. This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. Invite you to get something to write with and something to write on. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, on tonight, Lord God. Once again, Lord God, I just want to exhort you, Father. I want to glorify you. I want to magnify you, Father. Because, Father, everything that we do, you make it possible, Lord God. Because why? You gave your only begotten son for us, Father God, that we would have this life and life more abundantly. So on tonight, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for all of the faithful listeners that are out there, Lord God. For whatever means necessary, how they're able to hear about your son Jesus we thank you father God for their faithfulness but on tonight Lord God I ask you to open up every ear that is deaf oh God allow them to be able to hear in the rim of their spirit Lord God that they would be able to know you for who you really are you are the king of kings you are the Lord of Lords you are the Alpha the Omega you are the beginning and the end and you are the first and the last. And Father, there is none that is out there that's greater than you. So on tonight, Lord God, let them have receptible hearts and listening ears. We thank you for the anointing upon the man of God life. We thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge that you have given him, Lord God, so he would be able to give it back to your people. Lord God, we thank you for his faithfulness, Lord God. We thank you for this station and their faithfulness. We love you on tonight. We magnify you. We glorify you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end and the first and the last. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is still a good God. We thank him for his word that's still alive and powerful and sharper than any toward its sword. Thank you for the victory in Jesus, triumphant and victorious Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done, what you're doing and what you're going to do. The Apostle Paul said to his son in the faith, Timothy, from a child that was known the Holy Scripture, which was able to make the wise. Yet he tell Timothy to study, to show yourself a proof unto God, a workman that needn't be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. The early Christian, the church, the Burian Christian, they searched the scriptures out daily to see if these things were so. So God wants us to know. My favorite scripture, of course, is my people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We don't have to be destroyed if we search into God's word. The book of Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2 says, The glory of God to conceal a thing <laughs> as the honor of a king to search it out. So he conceal it, you search it out. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed rightly divine the word of God. The book of Acts, let's start here tonight and see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. The book of Acts chapter 6. And let's see what God is saying to us. Get something to write with and something to write on. This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio, 92.9 FM, your life, your salvation, your choice. Acts chapter 6. The Apostle Luke is given credit for writing this book, but as we said before, whether it's Luke, Peter, Paul, John, or whoever it is, the Holy Ghost behind it. Because the Bible says, holy men of God spake as the Spirit of God was upon them. So it's not getting any credit. The Holy Ghost is really the author of this book. Amen. Acts chapter 6. And let's read a few verses from Acts chapter 6. Pick it about verse 1. Acts chapter 6. And let's pick it about verse 1. Now in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of Grecian against the Hebrew because the widows was neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called a multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve table. Wherefore, brethren, look you among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continue to pray and to minister of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude and the chosen men, Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost, Philip and Pocorus, Nicona and Timon, Phimenus and Nicholas, the proselyte of Antioch. And when, they had, and when they had set them before the apostles, when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Let's stop at verse 7. 
And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great number of priests were obedient to the faith. Now, a little side excursion here, they're going to pick some men who's going to be deacon to assist the apostles. But look at the first thing they're looking for in their qualification. Go back to verse 3. Look at the third verse. Wherefore, brethren, look you out among you seven men of honest report. I thought that the Holy Ghost would be first, but here before the Holy Ghost, you want an honest report. Can you see that? Look at that third verse again. Wherefore, brethren, look you out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we appoint over this business. So three things they're asking for before they appoint these men. You now they call the multitude. Now you notice everybody don't have it because they call the multitude. So they call thousands, of, and from the thousands, they select just seven men that want to sit there. Look at that again. Let's go back up the top again and see that multitude they call, and from the multitude they select just a few. One more time, go back. In those days, the number of disciples were multiplying. There arose murmuring of the Grecian against the Hebrew because the widows were detecting the daily ministration. The twelve called the multitude. The twelve called the multitude. The twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them. Notice all were disciples. The whole multitude they called thousands of them, but every one of them were disciples They were saved. But you can see something, there are facets of revelation there, not because you're a Christian, meaning you're qualified. They call among the disciples. Look at that second verse. The twelve called a multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve table. Wherefore, brethren, look you among you seven men of honest report number one. Honest report number one. They call the multitude. Honest report number one. Follow the Holy Ghost. And wisdom number three. Look at something in the book of Second Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, and see what God is saying to us there. 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, first thing they want, they want an honest report. They want an honest report. Hallelujah. First, 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse 5. Put your finger on verse 5. 2 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 5. Beside all this, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance, to temperance, patience, to patience, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, charity. Notice love is at the bottom, but the first thing they want is virtue. How are you morally? How are your morals? Number one in the list, they want a good report before the Holy Ghost. Now here, add this to your faith. Number one you add to your faith is virtue. I thought that was very interesting. Look at it. Let's go back to verse 5. Beside all this, give all the little, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge. So virtue before knowledge. How are you morally? How are your morals? And to knowledge temperance, so temperance, patience, so patient godliness. Notice godliness is way down here. What? On the top of it is virtue. Number one is virtue. Uh, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity or love. If these things be in you and abound, that it may be that you never be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacked these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten. He was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give all diligence, make your calling and election sure. For if these things be in you, you shall never fall. Notice number one in the list. God had said some in the church, first apostle, Second, every prophet. Thirdly, teachers. Then he gave the work of the evangelist and so on. First is apostle. First on the list is virtue. Look you out, seven men of honest report. Number one, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. But honest report first. I thought that was very interesting. Let's go back to the book of Acts chapter 6 and see something. There's the men that were selected. We want to select one of those men who were selected. Acts chapter 6. And they select these men, and they're saying, go, go to verse 5, and they're saying, please the whole multitude. And they chose men, Stephen, full of faith, and the Holy Ghost, and Philip. We want to underline Philip. We want to select Philip and see who is this Philip. And let's close in on Philip. Acts chapter 21. <clears throat> and see Philip. Who is this Philip? Acts chapter 21. Get something to write with and something to write on. And hear what God is saying to us. Seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Notice Philip have to have an honest report. He must be full of the Holy Ghost and have wisdom to be selected. Stephen had it and others had it also. But they call the multitude. 
and it tells you something. Those are passes of revelation. They call multitude, multitude is thousands. When they feed the fuel with the five loaves and two fish, they say multitude was like 4,000 plus the women and children. So let's just keep it about 5,000. So they call 5,000 people, and from the 5,000, just seven people they selected there must have a good report, number one. Must have that. Add this to your faith, number one, virtue. I thought that's very interesting. So Philip, let's see who is this Philip? Acts chapter 21. And look at two verses, look at verses 8 and 9. Acts chapter 21, get something to write with and something to write on and hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Acts chapter 20, look at verses 8 and 9. Next day we that were of Paul company departed and came into Caesarea and entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist. Now we started off there, you notice how we started up there? And sometimes the one the reason why God doesn't promote some people or doesn't use them is not that they don't have some of the gifts inside of them, but you have to qualify. Now he look at that first to call these men, got all these men as deacons. First, a good report. Holy Ghost and wisdom. Also, a little side excursion here is also if you want to be a bishop, you must have a good report of those from within and without. If you want to be a deacon, you have to have a good report. They want that before Holy Ghost. That must be in your resume number one. Look at it. Verse 8. And the next day we that were Paul company departed and came into Caesarea and entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven and abode with him. Look at verse 9. The same had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. They tell you something about him. Now notice he's an evangelist. Evangelist is a ministry gift. God gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He's an evangelist. The word evangelist was mentioned three times. The word evangelist. Look at the book of Ephesians. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Philip, an evangelist. Let's see the work of the evangelist. Let's see who's qualified to be an evangelist. Notice the Sadhguru was a deacon. Number one on the list, a good report. If you want to be an evangelist, you have to have a good report. Number two, you must have full of the Holy Ghost. Number three, wisdom to qualify to be a deacon. Then you move up there, God will be used you later on in other ministries. But this is a ministry gift. This couldn't be had by the church. God give it. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 11. And he gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in a unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature and fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the slay of men and cunning craftiness where they lie in, lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, we grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ. We have to read those verses again. Notice who gave you this gift? God. The church couldn't give it to you. A university couldn't give it to you. A seminary couldn't give it to you. Notice who gave it. Let's read that again. Philip is a, a ministry gift. And you have to have certain spiritual gifts. We're going to look at that in a while. Look at this. Look at that verse again. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. He gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So this ministry gift is put there for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in a unity of the, on the knowledge of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about in every wind of doctrine by the slay of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, we grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Second Timothy chapter 4. The word evangelist, we see it mentioned three times. Acts chapter 21, verse 8, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And look at this here in Second Timothy. Chapter 4, and see what God is saying to us, then we want to see the work of the evangelists. Let's see who, who stands in that office as an evangelist. You say you're an evangelist, let's see if you match up to this. First, he started off as a deacon, 
to qualify in the to office as a deacon, you must have a good report first. Add to your faith, number one, virtue. Virtue, knowledge. Knowledge, temperance. Temperance, patience. Patient, godliness. Godliness, brethren, kindness. Brethren, kindness, charity. If these things be in you, you'll never fall. Number one of the list, virtue. Second Timothy chapter 4. Look at the fifth verse. Put your finger on the fifth verse. Second Timothy chapter 4. Look at verse 5. But watch thou in all things in your affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So three times we saw the work, the word evangelist mentioned. Three times. And a very, very important ministry. And the only one person standing at office giving us in the Bible. We'll see some things here. As we move on with this, go back to Acts chapter 8 and see what the evangelist does. Acts chapter 8, get something to write with and something to write on. Seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost. So if you're going to be an evangelist and you don't believe in speaking in tongues, you don't qualify. Acts chapter 8. And let's pick it up by the fifth verse. Let's see the work of the evangelist. Acts chapter 8. Let's pick it up by verse 5. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people of one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Unclean spirit crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. Many that were taken with palsy and were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. So we see here the evangelists have in his ministry certain spiritual gifts. Because we see here in these verses, he went down there and he preached, so evangelists must preach. Preaching is for the unsaved. Preaching is for the unsaved. The evangelists preach. Preaching is for the unsaved. Teaching is for the saved. Preaching has inspiration. Teaching has information. The evangelist preached, look at verse 5, and Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Notice what he preached. Not Buddha or Hare Krishna. Not mind science, two and two or four, four and four must be eight. What goes up must come down. You notice what he preached to them, Christ. You notice what he preached to them, Christ. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Look at verse 6. And the people with one accord go to heed unto those things with Philip speak, hearing, seeing the miracles which he did. So he could he have to preach. Then we're going to have miracles after. Well, miracles are spiritual gifts. There are nine spiritual gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, special faith, healing, miracles, discerning of spirit, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Three of them say something. They're the gifts of utterance, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Those are the gifts of utterance. Then you have the revelation gift, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirit. Those are the revelation gifts. Then you have the gifts that do something, the power gifts, healing, workings, a miracle, and special faith. They do something. So here, to be an evangelist, you have to have the do gifts. Can you read? Look at verse 6. And the people want to call, give heed unto the infilet speak, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. The miracles which he did. Unclean spirit cried with loud voice, came out of men that were possessed with them, and men that were taken with palsy, and that were lame were healed. So you have to have gifts of healing. You have casting out the devil instead of we cast out devil, so you need certain spiritual gifts to cast the devil out. You need certain spiritual gifts to cast the devil out. You need workings of miracle and special faith to cast the devil out. So if you're an evangelist, you have to have these gifts. Notice he preach, and then he have workings of miracle. Can you read? Look at verse 6. And the people want to call, give heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, the miracles which he did, the miracles which he did. On clean spirit, crying with love, us came out of many, so he cast out devil, and many that were possessed, many that were taken with palsy, crippled people, and that were lame healed. So he has the power gift. He have all three of the power gifts working his ministry. Special faith, healing, and working the miracle. Three of those working then in his ministry. But notice the evangelists have to preach. Let's look at Mark, M-A-R-K is Mark. Mark chapter 16. Looking at Philip the Evangelist, this is titled, When Philip Come to Town. Mark chapter 16, When Philip Come to Town. M-A-R-K is Mark. 
Mark chapter 16, when Philip come to town. Notice the evangelist have to preach. Mark chapter 16, and let's pick it about verse 15. Mark chapter 16, let's pick it about verse 15. Get something to write with and something to write on. And hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. 15. And he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and baptize shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpent, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So after that, the Lord has spoken unto them, he will receive up into heaven, and he sat down at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the words with signs following. You notice when Philip went down to Samaria, he preached, then he had healing and working as a miracle. He preached first. Then he had signs following his word. Look at verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Preach first, signs after. He went on to Samaria. The first thing he did, preach Christ. He preached Christ. I say he preached Christ to them in Samaria. And then you had the gifts of healing, working the miracle, special faith, and gifts of healing in Samaria. When he preached Christ, and let's read those verses again. Verse 15, and he said, going to all the world. Well, who is the world? Unsaved. The evangelist is for the unsaved, not for the saved. What you have in most churches is an evangelistic service every Sunday. The evangelist is for the unsaved. He going out in the kingdom of darkness. When you get saved, now you put him in the church to be taught. But he go out to darkness, going to all the world. Who is the God of this world? Satan is. Look at it. He said on them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and baptize shall be saved. You see, he's preaching to the unsaved. He that believe and baptize shall be saved. He's preaching to the unsaved. Not to the saved, to the unsaved. He's saved. He that believe not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with tongues. They shall take up serpent. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So that after that the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Look at verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They went forth and preached everywhere. In Asia, in Africa, in Europe, in the Americas, all the islands of the sea, went and preached everywhere. They went and preached everywhere, going to their world and preached them. And the Lord worked with them, confirming his word with signs following. Must preach. Book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, when Philip come to town. Luke chapter 4, the evangelists have to preach. Are you an evangelist? Evangelist is not for inside the church, evangelist is for outside. Go on, preach to the world. The world, the world is dead. Go preach life to them. Luke chapter 4, and let's pick it about verse 16. Look at the head of the church. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The evangelists have to preach. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4. Let's pick it about the 16 verse. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went to his synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down to read. And they will live on him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach. You anoint me to preach. You see, you have to be anointed to preach. I'll be anointed to preach. You want me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that the bruise. And to preach the acceptable and notice preach, preach, preach. When Jesus was here, he operated in the fivefold ministry as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. This is one of his ministry gifts. This is one of the ministry gifts. The evangelist. To preach the acceptable Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister. And he sat down, and the eyes of every one that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all they that bear witness and wonder that the gracious words that proceed out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? You see, he's anointed to preach. Let's read those verses again. Jesus, you have to be anointed to preach. Are you anointed to preach? Evangelists preach. Evangelists for the unsaved. Look at it. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, verse 16. And, it, and it was custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And when they delivered around him the book of the prophet Isaiah, 
He had said, he opened the book and he found a place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the laws. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue fastened upon him. He began to say, in these days, this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all they that bear witness wanted gracious words that proceed out of his mouth. He said, it's not this, Joseph's son. Hallelujah. Another one, the book of Romans. Chapter 10, the evangelist preach. The evangelist preach. The evangelist for the unsaved. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. The book of Romans, chapter 10. See what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. When Philip come to town. Romans chapter 10. And let's pick it up with the 14th verse. Romans chapter 10. Let's pick it up with the 14th verse. Romans chapter 10. Let's pick it up with the 14th verse. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall he preach except he be sent? The preacher have to be sent. The preacher have to be sent. The evangelist have to be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed our gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who had believed our report? Look at verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing, by the word of God. We have to read those verses again. I said we have to read those verses again. Get something to write with and something to write on. Acts, Romans chapter 10, and pick it up at the 14th verse. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall he preach except he be sent? For it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Notice, preach, 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 preach. You know how many times preach is mentioned there? But they have not obeyed our gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who had believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing, by the word of God. So the evangelists have to preach. The evangelists have to have certain spiritual gifts operating inside of him. Let's look at this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you're an evangelist, you have to preach, but you have to be anointed to preach. How shall he preach except he be sent? Who sent you? Remember Jesus said in the book of Luke, there were many lepers in Israel in the day of Naaman, but none of them was cleansed, same Naaman, who come all the way, who was sent to. There were many widows in Israel, but he was not sent to none of those, save the widow of the city of Sidon. Who sent you? You see, Paul want to go one. Who sent you to preach? You tell him, you go preach to the Gentiles, Paul. Peter, you go to the Jews. Jonah, you go to Nineveh. I'm telling you who to send. You have to be sent. Who sent you there? You have to be sent. Who sent you? Some was called. Others went. Some were sent. Somebody, some people didn't call them, just pick up their Bible and they went. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at the spiritual gifts that operate within the ministry gift. To be an evangelist, you have to have certain spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's pick it up at verse 1. When Philip come to town. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, pick it up at verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried on to these dumb idols, even as you were led. Well, if I give you to understand, no man speaking by the Spirit of God, call it Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus Lord by the Holy Ghost. You know, there are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. There are differences of administration by the same Lord. There are diversity of operation by the same God which work it all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, 
to another workings of miracle, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirit, to another diverse kinds of tongue, to another the interpretation of tongue. Look at verse 11. But all these work at one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. These gifts that operate within the ministry gave operate as the spirit will. Philip went on to Samaria, noticed the pattern, and he went, he preached first, then there was healing. Then there was workings of miracles, casting out devils. But these have to be preached first and have to be anointed to preach. Then you have to be called. God gives some apostles, some prophet, some evangelists, some pastors. You have to be called into those ministries. You have to be sent to certain areas. Went into Samaria to preach the gospel. Preach first. Preaching is to be unsaved. Teaching is for the saved. Look at this here. When you go down a little lower down in that same chapter, look how we set them up in the church. 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, look at the 28 verse. Look at the 28 verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and look at verse 28. God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophet, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps and government diversity of town. Now here he gave the work of the evangelist. He didn't call him the evangelist, but he gave his work. Let's see that verse again. God had said some in the church, first apostle, secondary prophet, thirdly teachers. Fourth in the list after this is miracles, then gifts of healing. Well, we saw there, go back to the book of Acts. Go back to the book of Acts chapter 8 and see Philip when he went on to Samaria. He didn't give his name, he gave his work. Gifts of healing and working a miracle as the work of the evangelists. Can you see that? Look at it. Go back to verse chapter 8 and verse 6. And the people with one accord give heed unto them, Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing the miracles. Well, he said them in the church, first apostle, secondary prophet, thirdly teachers. After that, he gave the work of the evangelist, workings of miracles and gifts of healing. Those are the work of the evangelist. The evangelist is fourth on the list. The pastor is number five on the list. First is the apostle. Second, every prophet, thirdly, the teacher, then the evangelist, then the pastor. We set them up in the church. Look at verse 6. And the people with one accord give hear unto the thing with Philip speak, hearing and seeing the miracles which they did. On clean spirit, crying with loud voice, came out of men that were possessed with them, men that were taken with palsy and were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. So when the evangelists come to town, there should be great joy in the city. Because somebody get healed, that's great joy. Somebody was delivered, that's great joy. Cast the evil spirit out of somebody, that's great joy. Can you see that? But notice he gave the work of the evangelist. The evangelist is number four on the list. Can you see that? Something else. <clears throat> Look at something in Matthew chapter 10. Let's see if we could put some more. Matthew chapter 10. When Jesus called his 12 disciples, he gave them power. Watch this. Matthew Chapter 10. Get something to write with and something to write on. I have a red lady edition. The head of the church is speaking and the apostle Matthew is recording. Matthew chapter 10. Let's pick it but verse 1. And when he had called unto his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the name of the twelve apostles are these. First Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, Lebius, who was surnamed Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas the who also betrayed him. These twelve he sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, nor any of the city of Samaritan, and enter you not. But go rather to the lost people of Israel. As you go preach, as you go preach, as you go preach, see, so going to the unsaved, as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look at verse 8. Heal the sick. Notice, preach first and heal after. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. You know, he, gave, he called him, you notice something here? He called all the men who he gave the power to. He didn't say just give it to anybody. God gives some apostles, some prophet, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now we give the names of these 12 apostles here 
and he gave them power. He gave them power. So the evangelists have to be anointed to preach. And he has certain gifts, spiritual gifts operating within his ministry. Workings of miracle, gifts of healing, and special faith. Working in his ministry to be the evangelist, to stand in that office. Look at, those, look at, verse, look at verse 5. And these twelve he sent forth, commanded them, say, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, nor any city of the Samaritan, and you not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go preach, say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely have received, freely give. Now to do all these things here that he asked them to do, you have to have certain spiritual gifts to do this thing. Just as the evangelist have to be equipped. If God call you, he equip you to stand in that office. When we look at the evangelist, you have to preach, you have to be anointed to preach, you have to be sent to preach. And then you have to have certain spiritual gifts operate within that ministry gift. Now he give, call them and send them to do these things. Look at, here, look at verse 8. Heal the sick. Well, you have to have gifts of healing. We look at it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, special faith, healing, miracles, discerning of spirit, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Healing is a gift. And it works as the spirit will. Look at it. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Well, to raise the dead, you need certain spiritual gifts. To raise the dead, you need three spiritual gifts. Workings of miracles, special faith, and gifts of healing to raise the dead. You need three of them to raise the dead. To cast out the devil, you need at least one revelation gift, and you need two of the power gifts. Revelation gift will tell you how many evil spirits are there and where they are. Man is a spirit living a body and have a soul. That your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So man is in three parts. When Jesus started his public ministry, he went about healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Those that were possessed, those that were lunatic, and those that were palsy. Those that were possessed have to do with the spirit. Lunatic have to do with the mind or the soulish area. And palsy have to do with the body. Well, these evil spirits will occupy any part of this part of your body. So you have, you have to have a word of knowledge or discerning a spirit will see them. A word of knowledge will tell you where they are, whether it's spirit, soul, or body. So you have to have to cast the devil out. You need at least one revelation gift or the discerning a spirit or the word of knowledge. And you need two of the power gifts, special faith and workings of miracle. You work the miracle and the person who receive it, they receive a miracle. Special faith, receive a miracle. So I need this gift to cast it out. So, but notice when you go back up to the top, go back up to the top. Matthew chapter 10, go back to the top. When he had called into his 12 disciples, he gave them power. When he called his way, he gave them power. He gave them power. So you have to have power. Who gave you power? There was in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, some men want to cast out devil. The devil say, who are you? Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? You can't cast us out and they jump and they beat him up. You're not authorized to do that. No, you're not authorized to do that. You're not called into that ministry. He could just, you know, a renegade person. Look at it. When he had called him, he gave them power. Call his 12 disciples, he gave them power against so unclean spirit to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. You have to have power to do it. Somebody give you the power. Where did you get it from? Huh? Now he give the names of who he gave the power to. He didn't give it to everybody. Everybody doesn't have it. To one is given. To one is given. To everybody doesn't have it. And even when you get it, it doesn't work all the time, as the Spirit will. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, special faith, healing, miracles, discerning of spirit, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues, they work as the Spirit will. You couldn't make it work. You better work by 8.30 or by 9 o'clock. So it, does, it doesn't work like that. And this is what happens with some people. Sometimes God uses them and sometimes He doesn't use them. So when God isn't using them, they try to use God. It doesn't work like that. These gifts operate as the Spirit will. And somebody give you the power. Let's read it again. Take a time and read it. And see what God is saying to us. Take a time and read it again. Look at verse 10. Go there. And when he had called him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. You have to have gift to do that. If you call it, you have to have certain gifts to do that. Uh, now the name of the twelve apostles of these, he called who he gave it to? Simon, who is called Peter and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas. And Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, Lebius who was surnamed Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas the scribe who was to betray him. All these he gave power. These twelve he sent forth, commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, nor any city of the Samaritan, and you not. But go rather to the lordship of the house of Israel, as you go preach. Notice, notice something there. There's a passage of revelation. Notice to activate the gift, preach first. And then you confirm his word with sign following. But notice you have to be authorized to preach. You have to be anointed to preach. 
How shall I know unless you be sent? When you give the word, he'll confirm his words with signs following. Can you see that? Preach. Go forth and preach. Go forth and preach. But look at me. There's a lot of revelation right here. Preach first and then the gifts come after. Look at it. Verse 5. And these twelve Jesus sent forth, command them, say, go not to the world of the Gentiles, nor any of the and somebody, and tell them where to go. Tell you where to go. You see? Jonah wants to go to Tarsus. No, you go to Nineveh. You go to Nineveh. You have anointing there. Paul wants, this is why I tell you want to go. Paul wants to minister a certain place. The Holy Ghost said, don't go there. He want to go someplace. Don't go there. I'll tell you where to go. You stay there. Then you had a vision. A time come over to Macedonia. You go there. You see that? Go, go in and wave the Gentiles. No, any city surround. Enter you not. You tell him where to go. But go rather to the Lord, but the half of Israel. You're anointed to go there. To those folks. And as you go there, preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely have received. Freely give. Can you see that? Freely have received. Freely give. Can you see that? Amen. So he give you some work to do. Some work you have to do. Let's go and see something else. With the apostle Paul. Most of the new covenant was written by the apostle Paul. Look at this here. Acts chapter 14 Acts chapter 14 and see what God is saying to us in his holy written precious word Acts chapter 14 look at the apostle Paul preach go and preach to these now you say well those 12 men he called there they were apostles they wasn't evangelists the evangelists have to preach that's true but we want to look at the apostle Paul he also have part of his ministry preach because you go into the unsaved, preach to the unsaved. When you get saved, now you've been taught. Acts chapter 14. <clears throat> Acts chapter 14. And look at the seventh verse. If you look at the Apostle Paul, Acts chapter 14. Look at the seventh verse. And there they preached the gospel. And there they preached the gospel. When Philip went out to Samaria, he preached. All of Samaria was in darkness. And all of Samaria, total darkness there. One Simon he saw, so everybody saying from the, from the least to the greatest, saying he's a great power of God. All of Samaria, so he have to go there and preach. So our answer to the false prophet is preaching with the evangelists. Look at this. And there they preached the gospel. And they sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother, whom who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, and steadfastly beholding him, perceiving the had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on their feet, and he leap and walk. But notice, preach first. Notice, preach first. Part of Paul's ministry is part of Paul ministries preach. Part of Paul's ministry is preach. But notice, preach went forth first. That's what I want to get. So the evangelist went forth into Samaria. He preached Philip the evangelist. Let's see another one. The amount of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Acts chapter 20. Just picking a little here and a little there. The amount of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Acts Chapter 20, get something to write with, and something to write on 41 minutes after the first hour. This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. I invite you to get something to write with, and something to write on, and hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Acts chapter 20, looking at the Apostle Paul. You say, well, Philip is evangelist, he preached, that's true. And we look at, he give these 12 men, he give them power, and he said, go forth and preach. But notice, preach first before they cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out the devil. They preach first. Preaching first, confirm his words with signs following his words. Acts chapter 20, look at verse 7. And the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached. Paul preached. I say, Paul preached. It seemed like when the evangelist got in, he preached, he charged the environment with the word of God, and things going to happen. And Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on tomorrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber, where they were gathered together. And they sat in a window, a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And Paul was long preaching, and Paul was long preaching, and Paul was long preaching, and long preaching. And he sang down and to sleep, and fell down from the turtle of a taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embraced him, and said, Trouble not yourself, for your life is in him. And when he therefore was come up again, he had broken bread and eaten and talked with them a long while, even until the break of day. So he, so he departed. And they brought up the young man alive and he would not have come. But you notice he preached. He had an evangelistic service there. He preached. Ah, Paul preached. Can you see that? 
Look at something in 1st Timothy. Get something to write with and something to write on. Look at 1st Timothy. I see part of Paul's ministry. 1st Timothy, chapter 2. Hallelujah. 1st Timothy, chapter 2. And see what Paul is doing to us. 1st Timothy, chapter 2. I want to see that. It's two different things here. Watch this. 1st Timothy, chapter 2. Look at verse 7. Put your finger on the seven verse. And here what God put your finger on the seven verse. Look at the seven verse. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. And a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. So three ministry gifts is wrapped up in the apostle Paul. Jesus operated in the fivefold as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Look at Paul say. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher. I am ordained. What does the word ordained mean? I am ordained a preacher. Preacher is the evangelist and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. And a teacher. So three gifts there. Preach, teach. Two different things all together. Two different things all together. Huh? Look at that verse one more time. Verse 7. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7. Whereunto unto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. And a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Can you see that? But look at who he preached to. Look at the book of Galatians. Who do you preach to? Yeah, pre preaching is for the unsaved. Preaching is for the unsaved. Look at Galatians chapter 1. We have something to write with and something to write on. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 1. Look at what Paul said. He write this book to the believers at Galatia. He said everything that receiver got it. Look at this, Galatians chapter 1. Pick it up at verse 11. Look at who he's preaching to. What you have in most churches every week, they're preaching to the same set of people every week all the time. Preaching is for outside. Teaching is for inside. Evangelism is for outside. Go into all the world. The world is those folks out there. Satan is the God of that world. You say first the thing that of the world and not the things that of God. The world is out there. Go into all the world. Preach the evangelism for the world. For the unsaved. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and baptize. You see, speaking to unsaved people, he that believe and baptize. That's not Christians. He that believe and baptize shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. The preacher is found there in the world. Galatians chapter 1, look at verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, the gospel which is preached of me is not after man. I need not receive it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion, how about measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jewish religion above my equal and my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated from my mother's womb and called me by his grace and revealed his son in me, that I might preach him, that I might preach him among the heathens, immediately I confirmed out with flesh and I preach him among the heathens. Go to the unsaved. Preach him among the heathens. Preaching is for the unsaved. Preach him among the heathens. I confirm not with brethren. I went up to Jerusalem to them that were possibly for me. And I went up to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. After three years, I went up to Jerusalem and see Peter and aboard with him 15 days. But none of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. So he preached him among the heathens. Preaching is for the unsaved. Can you see that? Amen, amen. But look at teaching. Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Two different things altogether. Preaching, teaching. Two entirely different things altogether. Philip come to town to preach. He's an evangelist. He have certain spiritual gifts operating within that ministry gift. Gifts of healing, workings of miracle and special faith. If you're an evangelist, they use Philip as a 12 inches. We saw the word evangelist three times. Acts chapter 21 verse 8. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 5. And Ephesians 4 and verse 11. We use Philip as the 12 inch evangelist. Very important ministry. He's to the unsaved. He's the fisherman. Go fish, get the fish and bring it in the church. And we cook it for you. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 18. And look at this. Acts chapter 18. And let's pick it about verse 9. Preach is one thing, teach is something else. Watch this. Acts chapter 18, pick it up at verse 9. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, 
be not afraid, but speak, hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall send thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Look at verse 11. And he continued there six months, teaching the word of God among them. You see, the teachers stay there all the time and teach. Tell them about tithing. Tell them about love. Tell them about heaven. Tell them about hell. Tell them about devils. Tell them about demons. Tell them about laying on hands. Tell them about the virgin birth. Tell them all these things. Train the child. Love your wife. Do these things. Study to show yourself approved. The teacher. Paul planted. Apollo watered it. God gave it increase. Paul plant. He's the evangelist. He plant. Apollo is the teacher. He watered it. And God give it the increase. Look at it. Let's read those verses again. Different from preaching is different from teaching. Look at it. Then speak the Lord to Paul in night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak. But to speak, hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall send thee to hurt thee. For I am much people in the city. And he continued there a year and six months. You see how long he have to stay to get the, to get the message across? You can't head off in one time. No, you have to stay there for a while. And teach people about tithing. The importance of tithing. About love. How important is love? Faith working by love. If there's no love, faith don't work. How important? God is love. He that hates his brother is a murderer. You have to stay until you get at the cross. Faith come it. He didn't say faith come. Faith come it. A constant play. Faith come it. Faith come it. All the time. Faith come it before you get it. Amen. And he continued there. He six months teaching the word of God among them. Another one. 19. Acts chapter 19. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 19. <clears throat> and let's pick up a verse eight. Teaching. Teach have to stay there for a while. The preacher come to town one time. He preached and get people saved and put them in the church and he gone. He may stay here for a few days and gone. But the teacher have to stay there for a while. And pass the word around. Acts chapter 19. And verse 8. And he went into the synagogue. Synagogue is like the church. Is that right? He went into the synagogue and speak boldly for the space of three months, disputing and proceeding the things concerning the kingdom of God. And when divers were hardened and believed not, and speak evil against that which is church, the Christian were called that way, before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Look at verse 10. He continued by the space of two years, so that all there which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greek. We have to read those verses again. I said we have to read those verses again. You see, teach have to be there for a while. You don't get it one time. <laughs> you have to get it for a while. Teach about tithing. Teach about love. Teach about this thing, the laying on of hands, ministry gift. What's the difference between word of wisdom, word of knowledge, special faith, and healing, and miracles? Is there any... But you have to teach in these things. Or each of these things are teach is a series by themselves. It takes a little while to get ministry gift. What's the difference between an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher? You have to explain this. It's different. All these ministries are different. Their functions are different. Their anointings are different. Yeah, you have to take a little while. Look at, look at these verses again. Acts chapter 19. See how long your teacher have to stay there? He preached. That's true. I want to come in to teach. You have to stay there for a while and teach before the people get it. Let's take a little while before they get it across. Get something to write with and something to write on. Look at verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and speak boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but speak evil against that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated his disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Look at verse 10. And he continued by the space of two years, so that they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greek. Can you see that? Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. The 28th chapter of the book of Acts. When Philip come to town, he preached the word of God to them. Going to on in a dark place. Samaria, dark from top to bottom. That's where the evangelists go. Acts chapter 28. Look how, look how Paul and his earthly ministry. Acts chapter 28. Look at two verses, 30 and 31. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, receiving all that came unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching. Two different things altogether. Preaching the kingdom of God. That's for the unsaved. When you get them saved, now they need to be taught. But preaching first. But preaching first. Look at it. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidden. But notice preaching first. Preaching for the unsaved. When you get them saved, now they need to be taught. 
put in a school setting, two years, two and a half years, three years, sitting there giving them the information about love, about ministry gifts, about spiritual gifts, about heaven, about the devils and demons, about hell, and all these different things, the second heaven, and all these different things, and all man in Christ, above 14 years, whether in the body, out of the body, I cannot tell, such a one was caught up in the third heaven, but out of the body, I can't tell, whether in the body, I can't tell, such a one was caught in the paradise. Tell him about these things. Man is in three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Tell him about it. When you die, your spirit and your soul leave your body. Your body stay here, but the spirit and soul leave. This, you are spirit being, and you're going to live forever somewhere. You're going to live for 100 million years, you'll still be alive somewhere, either down or up. Jesus come that we may go up. Satan wants you to go down. Teacher need to explain, explain that to you. Those of you who plan to go to hell, you're not coming back. Look at it here. Look at these two verses. Paul dealt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came unto him, preaching the kingdom of God. Preaching first, the kingdom, and teaching, preaching and, Mr. and, Mistress, black and, white, up and down, preaching and teaching. Can you see that? Look at the head of the church. I'll be remiss if I didn't say something about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I could just feel or sense the Spirit nudging me to say something about him. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 4. Look at when Jesus started his public ministry. Hallelujah. Preaching and teaching. Matthew chapter 4. See what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. Matthew chapter 4. And look at this. This is the head of the church. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4, let's pick it up by the 23rd verse. Matthew chapter 4, let's pick it up by the 23rd verse. Get something to write with, something to write on. Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogue. Notice synagogue is inside, teaching inside. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Notice preaching first, then healing after. Ah, uh, but notice you have to be anointed to do it. And it's gone out there. Really, if you think about it, the church inside really does need healing. Because if you sit under the world, you'll be healed. Amen. So we wouldn't have to be needed. Say, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the other church. If there's any sick among you. But really, sickness and that's really for outside there. Mm. Preach and you get people healed. But if you're sitting under a control environment, and you minister in the word of God, my words are medicine to all your flesh. You'll be automatically, you'll just get healed. But you see, the evangelist God, they meet sick people, deaf and dumb and blind and crippled and all the evangelists will meet that out there. So he, he need that gift out there. Workings of miracles, special faith and gifts of healing. But you see, in the church, really not. But he says, should you have one if sick among you, let them call for the elders in church, let them pray of him, the prayer of faith and, and so on, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick and so on. If. Can you see that? But Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that had taken with diverse diseases and torment. Those that were possessed with devils, those that were lunatic and those that were palsy and he healed them. And they followed him great multitude of people from Galilee, from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. Can you see that? So Jesus went about preaching and teaching. Two different things altogether. Preaching is for the unsaved. Philip went into Samaria and preached Christ unto them. They get saved now. They send for the apostles to lay hands on them and so on. Look at the book of Acts. Chapter 10. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Acts. Chapter 10. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. When Philip come to town. There's great joy in the city. Hallelujah. If you're an evangelist, you should have these gifts. If you don't have it, maybe you're not. These gifts are given by God Almighty. God gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. God set them in the church. First apostle, second every prophet, thirdly teachers. After that, he gave the work of the evangelist and the pastor. is last on the list. Hallelujah. Acts 10, look at the 38th verse. Acts chapter 10, look at verse 38. Put your finger on the 38 verse. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. With the Holy Ghost and with power. But notice somebody another. 
the Spirit of the Lord was upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel. He anointed me to preach the gospel. Notice some, he, anointed, he went and he, he gave the disciples power. But he first have to have it. God gave it to him, now he giving it to them. Look at it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and the power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And again, you see preaching first and teaching after. Preaching first. Look at it. Preaching first and teaching after. Now he said here how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. So how God and with the Holy Ghost went about doing good and healing. So doing good is preaching and teaching. Doing good is preaching and teaching. Look at it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Sickness and diseases are satanic oppression. Sickness and diseases are op satanic oppression. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. We have to read that verse again. Get something to write with and something to write on. How God anointed him. You see, he's anointed. Now when he called the twelve disciples, he gave them power. You see? The evangel of the power. It was a ministry gift. He anointed you to stand in those offices. If God called you to be in the office, he's going to equip you. The evangelists have to have certain spiritual gifts operating within that ministry gift to stand in that office. And your church couldn't give you that. God have to give it to you. God have to give it to you. Church couldn't give that to you. Look at that verse again. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Went about doing good. So preaching and teaching is doing good. I say preaching and teaching is doing good. Preaching and teaching is doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. How are you like that? God is still a good God and we thank him for his holy, written, precious words. Part two. Glory to God. Amen and amen. One minute after the second hour, get something to write with and something to write on Acts chapter 5. Go back there. Acts chapter 5. And see what God is saying to us there. Acts chapter 5. <clears throat> and look at something. Acts chapter 5. And see what God is saying to us in Acts chapter 5. <clears throat> Glory to God. Watch this here. Acts chapter 5. Look at two verses. As we look at part 2, when Philip come to town, Acts chapter 1, look at verses 12 and 13. Look at those two verses. And by the hand of the apostles, many signs and wonders were wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. The rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. But notice he says, and by the hand of the apostles, many signs and wonders. Well, signs and wonders are workings of miracle and special faith. Well, we saw Philip, when he went into Samaria, he had many signs and wonders working in his ministry when he went down to Samaria. Let's go back to Acts chapter 8 and see many signs and wonders. Keep that before you be coming back to it. Signs and wonders are workings of miracle and special faith. Acts chapter 8. When Philip come to town, if you're an evangelist, when you come to town, something going to happen if you're called into that office. But that's a ministry gift, and that's not given by a church or by some dumb denomination. Couldn't get that in a seminary or a cemetery. You have to get that from God. God give it. Some give. God gives some apostles, some prophet. God give it. And God equip them to stand here in that office. Acts chapter 8. Look at the 26 verse. Acts chapter 8. And look at the 26 verse. And the angel of the Lord speak unto Philip and say, Arise and go down towards the south, unto the way that go down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, to the desert. Now notice, all right, let's read some more. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopia, who had a charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for the worship. He was returning and sitting in the chariot and read the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit of the Lord said to Philip, Go near and join thyself to him. And Philip ran thither and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said unto him, Understand what thou readest? He said, how can I, unless some man should guide me? He said, I, Philip, will you come up and sit with him? Now here is the thing, the angel tell Philip to go down to Gaza and minister to this Ethiopian eunuch. Why didn't the 
angel minister to the Ethiopian eunuch. Why Philip have to do that? Go all down to the minister to one man. Well, let's see why. Let's see why. I angel him go down there. Why didn't the angel do it? Acts chapter 5. Go back to Acts chapter 5. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. Now, an angel them go down there and minister to this Ethiopian eunuch. Why the angel didn't do it for himself? Look at it. Acts chapter 5, look at verse 17. Acts chapter 5, look at verse 17. And when the high priest rose up and all they were doing over him were the sack of the Sarsi, and were full with indignation, they laid their hands on the apostles with an S and put them into the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said on them, Go and stand, speak to the temple, the people, all the word of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and they taught, and they taught on the high priest and they would come and say, find the doors. But notice, angels are not supposed to preach any gospel. The angel opened the door, look at verse 19. But the angel of the Lord came by night and opened the prison door and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak the word, go, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the word of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple in the morning and taught the people. But you see, the angel is not supposed to preach. The angel is not supposed to preach any gospel. The angel tell Philip, Go wrong and minister to that. He can't preach any gospel. He's not supposed to preach it. Tell Philip, You go and preach that. He be now he had to lock these guys up, put them in prison. And the angel opened up to them, you go preach in the temple. Let's see another one. Look at Acts chapter 10. Angel not supposed to preach any gospel. Angel not supposed to preach any gospel. That's not their function. Angels are ministering spirits sent to minister for those of us who are the heirs of salvation. Acts chapter 10. In the mouth of two, angel tell Philip, you go around to the way of Gaza. And you minister to him. One man all the way in the desert, go and minister to him. Acts chapter 10, let's pick it up at verse 1. Acts chapter 10 <clears throat> and verse 1. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a sentry of the band called the Italian band. A devout man, one that feared God with all his house and gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of the Lord coming unto him, saying unto him, Cornelius, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and an arm has come from memory before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. And he lodged with one Simon Atana, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what thou ought to do. You see, the angel is not supposed to tell him that. And not to preach to him. You go to Peter, and Peter going to tell you what to do. You see, three times we saw that the angel is not supposed to minister any gospel. They tell you what to do. You go there. Tell Philip, you go around to Gaza and you minister to this guy. They said, I want to lock the, the prison, the open the prison, you go preach the word of God to them in the morning. And here this cunning, let's look at this one more time. Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. Angel's not supposed to preach any gospel. That's not angel assignment to preach any gospel. You have to preach the gospel. That tells us something. That put the ball in our court. If there's people dying and going to hell, that's us. Jesus is not come out to preach any gospel. The Holy Ghost is not preaching any gospel. You are anointed to do it, but you have to do it. Anybody to lay hands on the sick is you. Anybody to feed the hungry is you. Anybody to clothe the naked is you. Anybody to cast out the devil is you. Have to do it. You see the angels come down and tell him, you go do that. Look at that 10 verse again. 10 chapter verse 1. And a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a century on the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that fear God with all his house and give much arms to the people, pray to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the night of the day, an angel of the Lord coming to him, saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked at him, he said, he looked at him, he was afraid, and said, What it is, Lord? And he said to him, Thy prayers and an arm is come from memory before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Quite a bit of revelation there. You know, you know something? God knows exactly where Simon Peter is. He knows he's by one Simon the Tanner, and his house is by the seaside. He knows exactly where you are. God knows where you are. Satan does not know where you are. Satan is not omnipresent. He's not omniscient and he's not omnipotent. When they was looking for the baby Jesus, they have to kill everybody to find the baby Jesus. Doesn't know where he's at. As the day when the sons of God came to present himself before the Lord, Satan came out. So God said, from whence comest thou? So if I'm going to and fro in the world and walking up and down in it. You see, he's not too 
and he's not fro at the same time. When he's up, he's not down. When he's two, he's not fro. You see, what he knows is what you tell him. You open your mouth and you tell him. You see, Samson didn't know where Samson great strength lie. Pay the lie, Lord, that might find out. Keep pressing him more time until she find out. When he opens his mouth and tell her, then he knows, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know. When you open your mouth and tell him, that's the only way he could find, she could find Pay somebody to find out who is that. You ever wonder this in your time of meditation? Jesus, wherever he ministered, always was a great multitude of people. Everywhere there was a great multitude. Not just a great multitude. He had Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And they don't know who they have to pay Judas his chariot. 30 pieces of silver to tell them who Jesus is. You ever wonder that? Everywhere. I mean, Jesus was always on the front page of every newspaper. On every television cast and dreamers, whatever means of advertisement. Everywhere is a great multitude. But they don't know who Jesus is. They have to pay Judas his chariot. And Jesus Christ said, him that I kiss, hold him fast. He doesn't know who he is. Doesn't know where Simon Peter is. He knows where Simon Peter is. He knows where Saul is at. He's at the one house at one Judas. Saul the Tarsus is in that house. Think about it. He doesn't know what you know. The only time they know that you have a bad back is when you open your mouth. The only time they know that you broke is when you open your mouth. The only time you know that you're sick is when you open your mouth. They couldn't tell where Samson's great trunk was. Pay him, and she keep, I mean, pressing him daily and daily and daily until he broke down and tell him. But she could, does know. He doesn't know that you're broke. He doesn't know that you're going through something. You open your mouth to tell the whole neighborhood that you're sick. You're sick and tired. I don't know what sick have to do with tired, but you're sick and tired. Well, you'll get sick and tired because that's what you say. And you tap into spiritual law. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast in the sea, and not doubt in his heart, but believe the thing which he says shall come to pass. You'll have whatever you say. You'll have whatever you say. You're sick and tired. Well, then you'll be sick and tired. Amen. Hallelujah. So they doesn't know where he's at. But you see, angels are supposed to preach any gospel. That's not their job. That's your job to preach the gospel. That is something. If people are dying and going to hell, that's you. That's not God. You go in and preach the gospel. Go into the world and tell everybody about Jesus Christ. Every one of you in your job should tell people about Jesus Christ. They don't want to listen. Hey, one day you'll stand before your maker and you hear about Jesus Christ. Amen. Acts chapter 8. Go back there. And let's pick it up with the 27th verse. <clears throat> Acts chapter 8. And the 27th verse. And he arose and went, and behold, a man in Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, her charge of all her treasures, has come to Jerusalem for to worship, returning and sitting in a chariot and read Isaiah the prophet. The spirit, and then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. And Philip ran. You see, you want to get somebody saved, run. Because that opportunity may not always come. Run. Philip ran. You see that? And Philip ran to that to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand this, what I'll read this. And he said, How can I let some man should guide me? And he uh, desired Philip that he will come and sit with him. Now, this is a facet of revelation here. Here is a man, a very educated, he's the treasury secretary of all of Ethiopia. He in charge of all the treasures of Ethiopia. He reading the prophet Isaiah, but he doesn't know what he's reading. How can I let some man should guide me? You see, that world out there, you could read the Bible, but does you understand what it's saying? Now, he's, he's in charge of all the treasures of Ethiopia, but he doesn't know what it's saying. How shall I let some man guide me? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in charge of all her treasure. And there's a lot of people, have Bibles, <coughs> supposedly well, highly educated people. Understand this, what thou readest? Understand this, what thou readest? How can I let some man should guide me? Look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, look at the 14 verse. Look at the 14 verse. If you're not saved, this is not for you. This book was written by spirit-filled Christian for spirit-filled Christians. You could read it. Understand what thou readest? Look at it. First Corinthians chapter, look at verse 14. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. <laughs> if you don't, you see, I say it like this, this is mine. The natural man transmit and the AM band which transmit in kilocycles. 
the Christian, the born-again man transmit on the FM band which transmit in mega cycles. You see, if you're not born again, you transmit it on the AM band, and you can't pick up FM signal on the AM band. You see, the natural man receives other things. He's reading it on the side, but I'll read, how can I? And hear him read the prophet Isaiah, how can I? Unless some man should guide me. Now, he have all that power, all the treasury secretary of Ethiopia. Look at the book of Zacharias. The book of Zacharias chapter 4. All that power he's had. And there's a lot of folks like that. They got a lot of power. Or so they think. All power come from God. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 4. He's in charge of all the treasures. Billions of dollars under his control. You read the prophet Isaiah. You might be good in that natural world. But that natural world is not taking you to heaven. What, it, what does it gain a man to have the whole world? What did give in exchange for your soul and lose your soul? Spend all your years accumulating money. You bring nothing into this world, you take nothing. Have a lot of stuff, but you don't have the mean stuff. Paul said, everything that I've gained, I consider it dung that I may win Christ. Yeah, everything that you have gained was sending him straight to hell. He was persecuting Christian and acting like a child of the devil with all the information that he had. So when he, when he got into Christ, he says, scales from his eye, now he can see clearly. Zechariah chapter 4, look at the sixth verse. Then answer and spake me unto him, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. You see, he you know a lot of things. He might have a lot of academic information, but do you understand what this is saying to you spiritual? You see, those things are going to come to pass. Spiritual things are eternal. Spirits are eternal beings. Word of God is forever. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and the life. Look at that verse again. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit. Might have a lot of information about running the currency of Ethiopia. But this is spiritual. Understand this word. Now read this. Something else. First John chapter 2. Hallelujah. First John chapter 2. Is first John in the Bible? Yes, it is. I'm going to make sure that we need B-I-B. Ali. Ali. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First John chapter 2. Look at the 27 verse. First John chapter 2. Look at verse 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need that any man should teach you. But that the same anointing teaches you all things. And it's true. And it's no lie. Even... As it has taught you, so you abide in him. Now, sometimes you would read that, you know, this is what Jim Jones take. He said, well, I got the Holy Ghost, so I don't need the Bible. I got the Holy Ghost, so I don't need the Bible. You know, and the part of scripture, he said, the Bible said, take no scripture. And he interpreted that word script as short for scripture. No, that word script, they mean purse or bag. That doesn't mean scripture. And his people say this here, well, I don't need you to teach me anything. I got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is inside of me. Well, that, yeah, that might be so. But, but you need somebody to put a handle in the words you're going to get a hold of it. Mm -hmm. Look at it. But the anointing which you have received of him abided in you, and you need not that any man should teach you. But the same anointing teacheth you all things, and it's true. And it's no lie. Even as it had taught you, you shall abide in him. Yeah, that's true. But you need somebody to teach you. You need a ministry gift. You may have the Spirit of God. Your spirit have to bear witness what I'm saying. That's true. You don't know why it's true, but that's true. You perceive in your spirit. Paul on his way to Rome, he pick up his eye, perceive that we're going to have some trouble ahead here. His spirit pick up something. Jesus perceived in his spirit that what they were saying, who could forgive sin but God only? This man speaking blasphemy. Jesus perceived in his spirit. He pick up certain things. Your spirit have to bear witness what I'm saying to you is true. If there's a prophet among you, that prophet spirit have to bear witness that, that that man is a prophet. You have to know that. So that spirit in you is going to bear witness that that bell or that green light is going to go and say, that's true. He says something that's not true. There are two Jesuses. No, a kick against that. A red light, come on. Everybody have to have sex with each other in church. No, a red light, come on. Drink alcohol, baby. Ah, oh, red light, come coming. Two men living together. Ah, oh, red light, come on. You see? You look at it. But the anointing which you have, in, you abide in you. And you know that any man should teach you. 
Yeah, but you've been taught now. Some people have been saved for years and they don't know these things. I don't know any man. I don't need anybody to tell me I have it. No. Your spirit have to bear witness with my spirit that what I'm saying to you is true. And I'm authorized to cook to feed your spirit as you feed your body. Can you see that? That's a little something for somebody who don't need anybody to teach them. Look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. If you don't need anybody to teach you, let's see this. Let's see how we get out of this one. Ephesians chapter 4. And you have people with Satan, I got the Holy Ghost, I don't need, huh? You ever wonder sometimes, you look at the people, look at, look at this, look at this facet of revelation. To him that have ears to hear, let them hear. They send Samuel, the prophet, under the old covenant. Only three people have the Spirit of God upon them. The prophet, the priest, and the king. And Samuel, anointed to stand in that office as a prophet. He went to Jesse's house to select and anoint a king to take the place of Saul, the first king of Israel, who fell. He went to Jesse's house, and he looked at the eldest son, Eliab, and he said, that have to be the man. The Spirit of God said, no. I thought he had the Spirit of God. How come he, you know? Mm. He went to the second son. He said, that have to be him. No. Mm. He went to the third son. I thought he had the Spirit of God. Huh? How read this down? He went through seven sons. It was none of them. And he asked him, Jesse, is there any? He said, well, we just have the baby. He said, well, let the baby come. And when the baby come in, God said, that's him. He said, man, look at the outward appearance, but God look at the heart. He's a prophet he couldn't tell. He's a prophet he couldn't tell. God, you see, this gift doesn't operate all the time. As the Spirit will. He has the Spirit of God. I don't need any man to teach me, yes? Oh, yeah. You need somebody to teach Look at this, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. God gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Well, what we need ministry gift for? If everybody have the Holy Ghost, we don't need any ministry gift. No, you need ministry gift. For the edifying, for the perfecting of the saints and so on. Till we all come in a unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed through until we carry out every wind of doctrine and slay of men cunning Christ, whereby they learn where to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Ah, huh? you ever figure that out? Sometimes God doesn't tell you, God doesn't reveal certain things to you. Here you have Elijah, the son of Shaphat. He has a double anointing of what Elijah, his boat, have. And the Shunammite son died. God didn't reveal it to him. He said, God didn't show me what it is. No, when he come into presence, you tell him what it is. So it doesn't work all the time. Paul, with his girl, with the spirit of divination. This she did many days. Nothing you can do about it until the gift manifests. Now you need ministry gift, brother, because everybody doesn't have it. Every Christian doesn't have these spiritual gifts. The one is given word of wisdom, word of knowledge, special faith, healing, miracles, he's earning a spirit, prophecy, tongues, interpreter. Everybody don't have it. I'd be a Christian, but you don't have it. Paul ministering in his ministry. He tells Timothy, drink a little wine for your often st stomach infirmities. But why didn't he heal him? Huh? Why didn't he heal him? He said, Trophimus, I left at my lead, I'm sick. Why didn't he heal him? And he has gifts of healing at work. He went on the island of Patmos. I went on the island of Malta. I meet uncivilized people and heal them. How come he can heal Trophimus and one of his workers, Timothy's son in the faith? Uh, you need ministry gifts. Everybody don't have ministry gifts. Everybody don't have ministry gifts. And the ministry gifts have certain spiritual gifts. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. When Philip come to town, go back to Acts chapter 8. This is what God is saying to us. 22 minutes after the second hour, get something to write with and something to write on. This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio, 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. Acts chapter 8. And look at this passage of Revelation here. These things we could learn if we would listen. Acts chapter 8. And look at, it, look, look at this. Acts chapter 8, look at, verse, look at the 26th verse. And an angel of the Lord speak unto Philip and say, Arise 
and go down towards the south onto the way that go down from Jerusalem onto Gaza, which is desert. Now an angel speak to Philip. Now think about it. For one man, an angel speak to Philip. But where did this angel get information from? There's a chain of command before you can get to Philip, the, the ministry gift. Look at this chain of command. Watch this. Look at Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. An angel, angels don't know, get up in the middle of the night and just go on. To, angels have to get instructions. Angels are ministering spirits and the minister for those of us who are ears of salvation. Look at this. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. Look at verse 1. Look at this chain of command here. Revelation 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ with God give unto him. So whatever Jesus have, God give it to him. Start with the Father God, down to Jesus. He showed unto his servant the thing which was shortly come to pass and sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. So it went from the Father God to Jesus, to the third person of the Godhead, to an angel, then to the ministry gift, then to the Ethiopian eunuch. One man, almighty God, who running all these universes, Think about it. Think about it. And think about it. He's not even saved. He didn't get saved yet. He's unsaved. He's not saved yet. Think about how precious you are to God. Almighty God. Everything that was made was made by God. Without him was not anything made that was made. He knows the ending from the beginning. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. And he's thinking about you. And he's not even saved. Reading the prophet Isaiah. He's not even saved. Let, let me read that one more time for somebody who didn't hear that. Revelation 1. Look at the chain of command for one man. We're in the desert. The cry of the evangelists come to Christ. The pastor say, stay with Christ. But look at that. One man. Almighty God. Almighty God. Look at it. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God give unto him. So the Father God give it to Jesus. To show unto his servants the thing which shall shortly come to pass. And send and signified by his angel unto his servant John. So from the Father God to Jesus, to the Holy Ghost, to the angel, to the ministry gift, to the Ethiopian eunuch. That is something. That is something. Because when you, when you, when you went a little lower down, when you go down to verse, when you go back to Acts chapter 8 and verse 29, the Spirit said unto Philip, go near. So the angel, the Philip, the angel and the spirit. Acts 8 and verse 26, get something to write on, something to write on. Look at how important that is. Acts 8 and verse 26, the angel Lord said to Philip, go and rise and go down towards the south. Towards. Angel tell him that. Now when you go down to verse 29, the spirit with a big S said to Philip, go near. So look how many people involved for one man. I mean, that's frightening. That is something. And we walk, as a Christian, as an informed Christian, you walk around with a low self esteem That is something else. Almighty God. Almighty God. For one man, not even saved, he's not saved yet. Almighty God, Jesus, Holy Ghost, angels, ministry gift, Philip is the ministry gift, the evangelist, for this one man. Ooh. You see the cry of the evangelist? Something is wrong with Christians who lost that spirit of evangelism. It doesn't bother you when somebody's not saved. You're on your job and you're working there. You don't tell anybody about Jesus Christ. Some people don't know you're working there for years. Nobody don't even know that you're saved. They never see you with the Bible. Never hear you praying. Never, nothing at all. They don't pray over the food before you eat it. Always someone, you have no Bible. If you have one, it's a very small Bible. I call it a secret service Bible. Have it tucked somewhere in your pocket. Nobody knows you have it. Everybody should know you have a Bible. Bigger the Bible, better. Carry it big. You can open some newspaper and spread it out on the train, on the bus, and wherever you're going, but you have your Bible, you tuck it away. If you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. Look at it. All that for one man. Almighty God. His Son Jesus. The Holy Ghost, the third person of the Godhead. An angel. A ministry gift, Philip. For one man, the Ethiopian eunuch. Think about it. Think about it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go back to Acts chapter 8. Stay there in Acts chapter 8. 
Look at the 32nd verse. I'm glad I came tonight, get something to write with, and something to write on while I'm cooking, I'm eating. This food is good. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 8, pick it up in the 32nd verse. And the place of the scripture which he read is this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter like a lamb dumb before his shepherd. He opened up his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speak the prophet this of himself or some other man. Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached him Christ. At the same Christian taken from all up there in Isaiah because that ain't gonna cut it. It's all right to talk about Moses and the Red Sea, talk about Elijah and all these guys. Yeah, but he taken from all they bring him to Jesus Christ. This is what's gonna get him saved, Jesus Christ. Then we're gonna read that again. I said we're gonna read that again. We have to read that again. Take him from all up there and bring him down to Jesus Christ. If he's in Genesis, bring him to Jesus Christ. Talk about Moses, bring him to Jesus Christ. Talk about Elijah, bring him to Jesus Christ. Talk about Jeremiah, bring him to Jesus Christ. Talk about Paul, bring him to Jesus Christ. Talk about Peter, bring him to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Look at it. Look at it, verse 32. And the place of the scripture which he read is this. He was as led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb done before his share. He opened up his mouth. His humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch answered on Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speak the prophetess of himself or some other man. Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Christ. That's what's going to make the difference, Christ. That's what's going to make the difference. Notice he's not saved yet. He's not saved yet. Christ, you take him all day, bring him down to Christ. You must have Christ. Without Christ, then nothing will work. And nothing will work. Let's, let's see some scriptures about Christ. Acts chapter 4. Take him from Isaiah and bring him down to Christ. Moses and Isaiah should each call Jesus Christ. Paul and Peter should each call Jesus Christ. The Red Sea, Red sea opening and manna from heaven should equal Jesus Christ. Everything, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 4. Take him from there. Look where you bring him. Acts chapter 4. Look at verse 12. He is not saved. You see, you have no Bible in the name of Isaiah, cast out the devil. In the name of Isaiah, be saved. Ah, uh -uh. Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 4, look at verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So all that Isaiah you read in the bread can't save him. Take him from Isaiah and bring him to Jesus Christ. Can you read? Look at that verse one more time. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby he must be saved. So Moses ain't going to do it. Isaiah ain't going to do it. Jeremiah can't do it. Ezekiel can't do it. Daniel can't do it. Uh-uh. Take him from there and bring him down to Jesus. No other name under heaven will be saved. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 3. You had something to write with and something to write on. Acts chapter 3. And no other name to get saved by. Acts chapter 3. Pick it up at verse 1. Acts chapter 3. Verse 1, Peter and John went up to get into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. A certain man lame from his mother's womb whom they carry and lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask the arms of them that enter the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an arms? Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed expecting to receive some of them. Peter said, silver and gold have I none such as I have given thee in the name. In the name. In the name. You see, not in the name of Moses, or Isaiah, or Jeremiah, or Abraham, or Isaac, or Jacob, or Joseph, or in the name. Uh, such a high in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of he took him by the right hand, lifted him by immediately his feet, and knocked the bone and received strength. You see, you can't get it in Moses, and Isaiah, and Jeremiah, and Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob. Ah, uh -uh. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven to do it. Jesus Christ. He give us a name that's above every name, that at that name every knee must bow, beings in heaven, beings on earth, and beings on the earth. And every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16. He has something to write with and something to write on. Take him from Isaiah, bring him down to Jesus Christ. Bring him down to Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 16, uh, Acts chapter 16. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16. Let's see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Acts chapter 16, pick it up at the 16th verse. Pick it up at the 16th verse. Acts chapter 16, look at verse 16. 
And it came to pass when we want to pray certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination matters, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and Christ, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which shows the way of salvation. This she did many days. Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come over her. And he came out the same hour. Devil, I come out in Moses' name, or in Isaiah's name, or in Abraham's name, or in Isaac's name, or in Jacob's name, or in Joseph's name, or anybody else's name, or in Barnabas' name, or in Paul's name, or in Peter's name, or in John's name. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We have to read those verses again. Jesus Christ. Take him all up from Isaiah and bring him down to Jesus Christ. You can't get saved in no other name. Jesus Christ. No other name under heaven. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And came to pass as they want to pray, certain dams that possessed with the spirit of divination matters which brought the masses much gain by suit saying. The same follow Paul and Christ saying, These men are servants of the most high God who shot the way of salvation. This she did many days. Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Big John chapter 14. Take him all the way from Isaiah and bring him to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Big John chapter 14. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, the written, precious word. While I'm cooking, I'm eating. Big John chapter 14. Look at verses 13 and 14. Look at verses 13 and 14. I have a red light edition. The head of the church is speaking. The apostle John is recording. Big John chapter 14. Look at verses 13 and 14. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. But if you don't ask it in my name, you won't get it. This is doing the works of Jesus. When you lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus, cast out the devil in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Baptize in the name of Jesus. Everything is in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Whatsoever you ask in my can you read? Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's doing the works. If you don't have the name, you can't do it. And nothing to do with Moses and Isaiah and Jeremiah. All that should equal Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 16. Get something to write with and something to write on. Acts chapter 16, still have a red light edition. The head of the church is speaking still. The apostle John is still recording. Acts chapter 16, look at two verses, 23 and 24. Acts chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it you. Hitherto you ask nothing in my name, ask, and you shall receive that you join me before. This is prayer. If you're going to pray, you have to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. To the Father in Jesus' name, this is prayer. The other one is works. This is prayer. What's if you ask in my name, I'll do it. What's if you ask the Father in my name, I'll give it. Anything you want to get, husband, wife, healing, money, whatever, ask the Father in my name. This is prayer. In that day you shall ask me nothing. Very, very, I say unto you, what if you ask in my name? What's where the Father in my name? What's where the Father in my name? So in my name is there, you ain't getting it. You don't ask the Father in my name, you're not getting it. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name, ask, and shall receive that you join me be full. Huh? Anything you ask the Father in my name, if my name is mentioned, Jesus is mentioned, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. In the name of Jesus. Matthew, chapter 18. Get something to write with and something to write on. Philip, take him all the way from Isaiah and bring him down to Jesus. No, oh, that ain't going to save him. Jesus is going to save him. Matthew, chapter 18. Hallelujah. God is still a good God and we thank him for his holy, written, precious word. In the name of Jesus, before you go to bed tonight, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Don't know why you might wake up on the other side. Make sure you go to bed in Jesus. Make sure you get up in the morning in Jesus. Before you get in your car to drive, Jesus. Whatever you're going to do, Jesus. Jesus, before you eat, Jesus. Jesus. In that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, that ain't going to help it. Ah, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In that day, many are going to say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesy, yes, Lord, Lord, I'm going to cut it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan is, could, be Lord, could be your Lord. Matthew 18, look at verse 20. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. This is in church. 
If you got in my name, I'm there. If you not, if you didn't get in his name, he's not there. If he, he's not there, third person is not there. It ain't gonna work. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, they are in the midst of them. You got in my name. You got in my name. You got in my name. I'm there. Look at this here in Matthew chapter three. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, everything you need, Jesus. You don't have no Jesus, then go work. He's the chief cornerstone, he's the Alpha and the Omega, and everything in between. He's the first and the last, and everything in between. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Look at this here. Very important, the day of Pentecost, he said, don't leave Jerusalem until you do it far from on high. Don't leave, stay here. And Jesus, when he started this, think about it, Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, eight days old, they take him to Jerusalem. After that, Herod wanted to kill the babies, they take him and went into Egypt. When we run to Jesus again, he was 12 years old. And after that, we when he started public ministry, he was about 30 years of age. We have no B-I-B-L-E for Jesus doing anything, healing anybody, cast out every dead, preach any devil, preach any gospel, until he was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Coming out of the river, they saw heaven open, and the Spirit of God descended like a dove. Then Jesus started preaching the gospel, healing all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. When he selected his twelve disciples before he go back to be at the right hand of the Father, he said, Don't leave Jerusalem until you do it powerful and high. So if you don't get it, don't go. When you get it, then you can go. But if you don't get it, don't go. First start in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, then the uttermost parts of the world. But don't go until you do it powerful and high. So people who don't believe in that, don't go and preach. Unless you do it powerful high. Look at this. Matthew chapter 3. And John the Baptist making a statement here. Big John, uh, Matthew chapter 3. Look at the 11th verse. Look at the 11th verse. Put your finger in the 11th verse. When Philip come to town. Hallelujah. Big John, not Big John, Matthew chapter 3. Look at verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So Jesus Christ is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. Can you beat that? The people who say they don't believe in town, they don't believe in, we don't believe in that, that's of the devil. You must be out of your mind. You some mental case going to some asylum or just coming from one. Who baptizes the Holy Ghost is Jesus. So if you say that's of the devil, you calling Jesus Christ the devil. Because he's the one baptized you with the Holy Ghost. Look at it. I did baptize you with water unto repentance. And you should, look at that. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So all of us who follow the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ. You imagine that Jesus Christ baptized us in the Holy Ghost. He's the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. That is something. So the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God fell in man, they all fell with, you know, don't they? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Anything you want to do, Jesus Christ. To be baptized in water, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, salvation. How to come to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost is the baptizer, you are the candidate. Family of God is the element. Hallelujah. Go back to the book of Acts. Salvation. Take him all the way from there. Go back to Acts chapter 8. 42 minutes after the second hour, get something to write with and something to write on. This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 8. <coughs> and let's pick it up at verse 32. And the, and the scripture that you read was this. It was let us... As a sheep to slaughter, like a lamb dumb before he shall open out his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and declare unto his generation, for his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom the, whom, whom the, speak, the prophet speaketh this, of himself or some other man. Philip opened his mouth at the same time and began to, to, to script a preacher named Christ. It's no other name to be saved by Christ. Verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came near to a certain water. The eunuch said, See, here's water. What do we need to be baptized? Philip said, if thou believe with all thy heart, thou mayest. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All this time he going through all that reading, I said, he not even saved. That is a facet of revelation. That is something he reading the prophet Isaiah. 
in charge of all the treasures of Ethiopia. He not even saved. And he want to be baptized in water. No, there's only one baptism. That's the one that saved you. Ephesians 4 and verse 4, one baptism. That's the one that saved you. But think about this. He's not even saved. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, the third person of God, the Holy Ghost, an angel, a ministry gift for one guy who is not saved. That is something. When you minister to somebody, look how many people get involved for salvation for one person. Think about that. He not even saved. Look at verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. The eunuch said, here, see water. What do you need to baptize? Philip said, if thou believe it with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answers, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went and boat into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and they were baptized and so on. So Philip baptized him in water. They get him saved. But notice that all that, you have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So take him out from Isaiah. Did I ain't go do it? Bring him down here. Confess Jesus is Lord. Can you see that? <clears throat> Look at the day of Pentecost. Go back there for a little while. The day of Pentecost. <coughs> and see what um, Peter on the day of Pentecost. Look what they do to be saved on the day of Pentecost. Watch this. On the day of Pentecost. <coughs> After all these years, salvation finally returned to planet Earth. When Adam sinned in the garden, God said, the day you eat, you're going to die. So he was alive spiritually, but he wasn't talking about physical death, was talking about spiritual death. The day you eat, you're going to die, be separate from God, because Adam lived to be 930 years. So he said, the day you eat, you're going to die. So salvation disappeared from planet Earth, so nobody was saved until the last Adam came, went into hell and defeat Prince of Party and Power, preached the gospel to those Old Testament saints and take them on to the Father and so on. And then he went in the upper room and breathed to those disciple in the upper room and got them saved. So this is the first time now when they're full of the Holy Ghost, they're going out and preach. They got saved, Jesus breathing them in the upper room, they're saved. But now they're going out and preach, they're Pentecost. Look at this, let's pick up the story at verse 37, Acts chapter 2, let's pick it up at verse 37. Acts chapter 2 and verse 37. What must I do say? Call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 37, Acts chapter 2, look at verse 37, this is their Pentecost. Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ with remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and unto your children and unto all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. And with many other words did they testify and exhort them, save yourself from this untoward gener generation. Look at verse 41. And then they that gladly received the word were baptized the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And that is something. 3,000 souls come in one time. But notice what they have to be doing saved. First time they're preaching the gospel outside. They got saved. Peter and Jay, John got saved in their problem. They breathe on them, receiving the Holy Ghost, salvation, return. After thousands of years. Now they're preaching outside. Peter preaching outside the day of Pentecost. Look at verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, repent. You see, sinners have to repent. You see, sinners have to repent. Sinners have to repent. You see, repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and unto your children. And to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. And with many other words that they testify and exhort them, save yourself from this untoward generation. And they that gladly received the word were baptized. And the same day they were added on about 3,000 souls. What must I do to be saved? Look at the book of Acts chapter 16 and Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail. I have a few minutes to go. Let's use it wisely. Hallelujah. And Philip come to town. Preach. Acts chapter 16. And look at Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail. What must I do to be saved? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail. And look at this. He might be the Philippian jailer, but he's not saved. Look at this. Acts chapter 16, pick it up at verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and every man bound were loose. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of the sleep, seeing the, the prison doors open, drew his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. Paul cried with a loud voice and said, Do thyself no harm, for we all here. And he called with a light and sprang in and came and 
and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And they brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Look at what they have to do to be saved. What do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou one shall be saved in all thy house. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou one all thy house shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can say anything, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other name. There is no other name given among men whereby you must save. No other name. It's the only name you get saved by. No other name. You must be saved. Can you see that? No other name. You want to be baptized in water? Be saved by Jesus Christ. Everything is Jesus Christ. No other name. Everything, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Look at this. Peter at Cornelius' house. Write these things down. Everything, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. No Jesus Christ, nothing working. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now, Peter went to Cornelius' house to preach the gospel to them. This is the Gentiles, the first time the gospel going out to the Gentiles. Think about it. And he went to Cornelius' house, preached the gospel there to, to the Gentiles there, Cornelius' house, and everybody there was filled with the Holy Ghost and so on. He said, the Spirit fall on us, it fall on them just as on the day of Pentecost and so on. But let's speak about Acts chapter 10. And let's pick it up with the 44th verse. Peter at Cornelius' house. All wrong, everywhere. Jesus Christ. Salvation, Jesus Christ. Laying a hand in sick, Jesus Christ. Cast out the devil, Jesus Christ. Name that's above every name, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Add that word in your vocabulary. Keep it in there. Don't let it out. This book of the law shall not depart from out of my mouth. I'll meditate therein day and night and observe to do according all that is written therein. Then thou art make my way prosper. Thou shalt have good. Keep the word in your mouth all the time. My words are medicine to all your flesh. Acts chapter 10 and Peter at Cornelius' house. Pick it up at verse 44. And while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And there was a circumcision which we leave was astonished, for as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also power the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? Now the salvation they take care of that already. And the um, full of the Holy Ghost, second one. Look at, look at this one. And they should not be baptized, which is the Holy Ghost. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Come baptized in the name of the Lord. And they prayed them that they might tarry them certain days. So even with water baptism, everything we have to do with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. When Philip comes down, think about it, the work that he had. Yeah. Entire city, all in darkness. Philip, one man, equipped with the Spirit of God, equipped. To go in there and turn everything around. Show the preaching, teaching the things of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You know, something that you said just kind of stuck with me. You know, once people get saved, it's like they get so comfortable. Like they they lose that zeal that they had when they first got saved. You know, it's like they don't, people don't even know that they're saved. You know, they sit around, they listen to conversations and everything. But that, that's sad. If somebody is looking to know whether you're a man or woman. You should yeah. look and tell you that you're saved by your conversation, your conversation, yeah. your lifestyle, that something is different about you. If you lose your enthusiasm, just the way that you get the knowledge that when I die, I'm going to heaven to be with God. People who you don't minister to, even sometimes not so much by your word, but by your lifestyle. Yes. That if they don't minister them, they're going to hell. I want to arrive in hell and come back. So you should do everything if sometimes you might be able to articulate a lot of things in words, but your lifestyle. Could say, tell a story, tell a picture by the way you conduct yourself. So you, you're ministering all the time on the train, on the bus, on your workplace, with your, your conversation, all the time you're ministering all the time. It might mean they're not hiring you in the job to preach the gospel and things like that, but you could preach the gospel by your action. Exactly. You see, so how are you behaving? How is your conduct? You see? And the Bible talks about this. How is your lifestyle? What people see in you when they see you? I think a good facet of that is Daniel when they put him in the lion's den. Yes. And here this Darius, ungodly king, <laughs> saying, Janet, is the God that you serve continually able to save you? So this ungodly king know that he's serving his God all the time. Three times a day, Daniel would pray, and he was chief in the kingdom. He's the chief president. But he don't care as busy as he is, he's going to pray. Amen. So here's the king, ungodly king, saying, is the God that you serve continually? What are your employers saying about you? 
you just like if you curse, you smoke, you drink, you can dirty conversation. They have to see something different. You you were put on that job not because of the color of your skin for your education or your geography, look where you come from. You were put on that job as salt to prevent decay and add flavor. You was there to put a, you put there as a light to put a light in a dark place in a dark place. That's when you are light in a dark place. So you're not there just because you're cute or you have some education as a Christian. No, you are light in a dark place. You there salt to prevent decay and add flavor. That's why you're there. So you should minister all the time. People should see when they see you. And every now and again, you see people who don't tend to too frequently. They see when you try to smoke, and they say, the minute they see me, put the cigarette out. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, they see me coming to turn the, put the cigarette out. They might be saying something, or they stop the conversation because it's not a yeah. godly or edifying conversation. They stop. They cease and desist. Mm -hmm. You see, so that you should minister all the time because if you know the, the consequences, mm -hmm. and you're not going to all the world and preach, preach the, the gospel. gospel. Yes. You see, well, you could preach it sometimes by your action. You see, and they, they tell you something like, look at, look at this here. We could look at this quick before we run out of time. In Peter, <clears throat> in 1 Peter, he said something here in 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's look at it quick. This is just something I decided before we do the salvation prayer. 1 Peter chapter 3. And look what he's saying there. Likewise, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Likewise, you wife, being subject unto your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also maybe with all the word be won by the conversation of the wife. That word comes in their lifestyle. Not, not by the word, but the conversation of the wife. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Chaste conversation, that word again comes to your lifestyle or a man of life. Who's adorning? Not let it be the outward adorning of the plaiting of hair or the wearing of gold and putting out of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. From what inside should come out, from some should Amen. push outside. You see, it's that inside. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. You see? Amen. You see, because it's good. Let it be the hidden man of the heart in which is not corruptible, even ornamented by meek and acquired spirit, which in sight of God is of great price. For after this manner, in all time, holy women also trusted in God, adorned themselves in being in subject unto their own husband. Even as Sarah obey Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters are yours, long as you do well, be not afraid with any amazement and so on. But you see, sometimes you can be warned by your conversation Amen. and not so much by your word because they're not preaching it. Not Praying you to preach the gospel, but your lifestyle should tell a story. Amen. Amen. We want to give those that are viewing and listening, coming together with this station, an opportunity to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. At the end of the day, that's what's very important. Where you're going to spend eternity, very important. We want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you're not saved, it's for you. But if you're already saved, you can stand proxy for somebody. For your mother, for your father, your brother, sister, your children. Some of us got saved when we were already adult. Our children already had gone in separate ways. So you don't want them to perish and go to hell. So you want to stand proxy for some of those folk. People in your job, they're good people. Some are nice people. The people in the building where you live. But they're not saved people. So you want to stand proxy for them. If you're not saved, you stand for yourself. But if you're already saved, stand proxy for some of these people. Repeat these words I mean from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You said in your holy word. You said in your holy word. Whosoever come to me. Who should ever come to me. I'll in no way cast out. I will no way cast but out. But I'll take them in. I will take them in. So I come to you. So I come to you. You didn't cast me out. You didn't cast me out. But you took me in. But you took me in. And I thank you. And I thank you. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verse 13. Verse 13. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord. Who should ever call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. So I call upon your so name. I call upon your name. So I'm now saved. So I'm now saved. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verses 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth confession is made unto but salvation. with the heart man believe it unto righteousness. But with the heart man believe it unto to righteousness. So I confess with my mouth. So I confess with my mouth. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. That he died. That he died. Went to hell. Went to hell. Spent three days. Spent three days. And three nights. And three nights. Just for me. Just for me. Because I confess that with my mouth. Because I confess that with my mouth. And I believe that in my heart. And I believe that in my heart. I'm now saved. I'm now saved. I now become. I now become. The righteousness. The righteousness. Of God. Of God. In Christ. In Christ. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. 521. 521. Jesus. Jesus. You represent me in heaven. You represent me in heaven. And I will. And I will. Represent you on earth. Represent you on earth. Jesus. Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For what you did for me. For what you did for on me. Calvary. On Calvary. Shedding your blood. Shedding your blood. To redeem me. To redeem me. From the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. Spiritual death. Spiritual death. Poverty. Poverty. And sickness. And sickness. Satan. Satan. You're no longer my Lord. You're no longer my Lord. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is my Lord. Is my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I'll live for him. I'll live for him. I'll serve I'll him. Serve him. I'll study his words. I'll, study his word. I'll be a good example. I'll be a good example for all to see. For all to see. And I thank you. And I thank you. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Give yourselves a hand. The Bible says.
Christianity is not passive but active. The Bible says when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and find none, he's coming back. He come back and find the house empty, sweep and garnish. You're going to get seven more spirit, more wicked than seven. Come back to dwell there and your last state is worse than your first. So you need to do something about it. Be, don't give any place to the devil. Start reading your Bible. I want to suggest you start with the gospel according to John. Read the first chapter. In the morning, read again at lunchtime. I read again at bedtime. Take your time and read it. Don't try to read the whole Bible in one day. Take your time. The Spirit of God is going to lead you around as you go on. Tomorrow you'll read chapter 2 and then chapter 3 and so on. Take your time. And as you go on, the Spirit of God will lead you maybe to the book of Proverbs, maybe the book of Psalm, maybe the book of Acts, maybe the book of Romans, or First and Second Corinthians. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. But maybe tell you, walk right through the book, go from the book of Genesis and just keep coming through the book. But take your time and read. As you feed your body, feed your spirit. And God going to bless you for these things. Don't curse the dark, but light a candle be a blessing to people. I've never seen a person receive Christ and become a worse person, always a better person. So you're yes. going to be a better person, you receive Christ. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that you've yes, given us Lord, the opportunities and privileges. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who make all this possible. Yes, thank Lord. you for the victory in Jesus. It's victory in honor. We give you all praise, all Hallelujah. honor, and all glory, because all thank belong you, to Father. you. In Jesus' name, amen and, and amen. amen. Good night. You have been listening to Pastor Randolph Ferdinand teachings from the word to get a copy of this teaching or any of the other series call 347-533-4271 347-533-4271 or visit the christian community center at 326 junior street in brooklyn that is 326 junior street in brooklyn Sunday worship, 9.30, 10.30, and 12.30. Bible study, 6.30 p.m. on Monday nights. Like us on Facebook or YouTube at H2C3 Ministry. H2C3 Ministry. Go for the word. Ladies and shoppers, get the world's best and highest quality teas and products. Ask for them by names. Get Dr. Robert's brand natural red tea and Dr. Robert's brand for granite red tea, which helps improve blood circulation, reduce aging of cells, and improve your immune system. Dr. Robert's neem tea helps to protect you from skin sores, itching, and also helps to kill viruses and parasites in the stomach. Always use Dr. Robert's brand colon cleanse and stomach washout herbal tea. Dr. Robert's Sanity Bags help you to clean your stomach and protect the stomach from sour stomach diseases. Stagnant food causes bacteria and virus to live in the stomach wall which prevents stomach from absorbing nutrition and from doing its work. You cannot clean your stomach with a brush, so use Dr. Robert's brand colon cleanse and washout tea and Dr. Robert's Sanity